This is arguably my favorite vintage horn design. And uh, this one, which is from the later era of the True Tone 225 series, um, plays just great. Stay tuned to this video and I'll tell you more about this special horn from 1949. Hey everybody, it's Trent Austin from Austin Custom Brass. I hope you're doing well. Thanks again for your great support of the shop. We can't do it without you, and we are so very thankful for you. Please hit that button down there, subscribe, stay up to date with us, because we have so many cool things. I have literally dozens of horns that I have to still do videos on, and uh, so I wanted to do this one today because it's so cool. Um, and you know how much I have uh, a love of this horn, and I have one in my own collection as well. Um, this is the Bisher, and I guess that actually is the proper pronunciation of this because someone said that a family member pronounced it that way. So we can't really say that the family members can't pr pronounce their own name right. So the Bisher or Busher uh, 400 series, they made two of these horns. One was the 224, which is a smaller bore, which I think was like a 448 bore. Um, and then this one, which is the 225, which is the more common, and this has uh, the 454 bore. Now, this horn is the epitome of trumpet design, and it is absolutely exquisite in, in terms of all of the things they've done. If you want to call it the kitchen sink of elaborate trumpet designs, that's perfect, because I'm going to show you some of the stuff that they do. First, let's look at that valve block. And look how it's scalloped from the top down. It's got two-piece block, and then look at this. Look how it flares out. That design has never been reproduced, and it is exquisite. The threads are internal threads. They thread in to the bottom of the block, and they thread into the top of the block. They don't thread over like you'd see on a Bach or a Yamaha or an Adams or something like that. Very cool. Notice how the bell is soldered directly on to the valve block. This produces a really narrow wrap, really tight wrap, feels very good in the hand. This is an ergonomically friendly trumpet, even though it's a little heavier than a standard trumpet. All three of the valve slides are not only reversed, and when I say reversed, they have a reversed configuration there. See how top and the lower are different tubes? But they're also on one side of the valve. Courtois later called this direct air column. And the premise is that your energy goes into the valve block this way. It goes in and right through to there. Supposedly makes it more efficient. Ah, I don't know. I just know it's a pretty awesome design. Um, check out the Tremone style water keys. Of course, beautiful. Lots of nickel on this horn. You see the nickel, 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 nickel. Um, and then one last feature is the bell garland. You see how there's a wrap around the bell. Um, and then the engraving. There we go. Not my normal camera. It's on the fritz lately, so pardon the lower fidelity um, camera of this horn. This horn is a great all-around trumpet. You heard me play a little bit of um, Lotus Blossom, the Kenny Dorham tune. Uh, let me play some classical stuff on it. I'll first start with um, Haydn.
because it has that smaller bore, it's a little lighter when you play it with a softer, more casual airstream. So it's a little bit, I can almost get it to that E flat E type of trumpet sound where it's light and precise. But if I play something more uh, orchestral, I am not an orchestral player, uh, you'll hear it get a little bit more vibrant and slightly more aggressive. So it has a, a good amount of spin, and the mouthpiece I'm using wouldn't be an orchestral mouthpiece. It's my MV3CS, so it's it's like a 2C with a little bit of um, more aggressive cup, but very easy to play. Uh, something lyrical. Compression on this horn is just wonderful. It really is. I don't know if you'll hear it. Well, if I get the slide out. Okay, here we go. It, it's actually on our Magna Helic. It measures a little bit lower than like a new Adams, but definitely not in the vintage world where you have to use super heavy oil. You could use a normal Hetman number two and be just fine with this horn. So that's really great. Um, let me play some bebop on it. I just love this trumpet. Very fun. And if I put in my lead mouthpiece, which is my TAZ, it gets really bright. just found out the first valve works nice on high A on this horn. So there you go. That's a tour of this beautiful raw brass Fisher 400 225, which we'll be having for sale. The link will be in the description. If you have any additional questions, you know how to reach us. 816-410-0826. And thank you so much. Hit that subscribe button. Stay up to date with us and keep on keeping on. Cheers.